How y'all doing? For this next series of reviews, I'm going to go over each of the novels of the John Carter of Mars series, also known as the Barsoom series, by the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs. Now, my copies of these are not in the old-fashioned paperbacks. They're in the I have all 11 books in four volumes here, which I collected from Science Fiction Book Club years ago. So I got all 11 of them. But you can get these in any sort of way you want. You know, John Carter being popular enough, um, you can get in uh, trade forms, you know, three in one, that sort of thing. Or, you, you know, if you look at used paperback store, um, you can find the old paperbacks for pretty dirt cheap if you look right. Now, one also one of the books I have, um, of the first book, Princess of Mars, I have this beautifully illustrated um, copy by IDW. As far as I know, this company has not made any other books, unfortunately. This is just the first book, beautifully illustrated by Michael Kaluta. You can see, and it's um, um, just adds wonderful uh, flavor into this, and add you know. You know, just a great way to present the world of Mars uh, that Edgar Rice Burroughs has created. Show off another one here. But, I'm digressing a bit. So, let's begin with the first book, A Princess of Mars. So, it starts off with John Carter. We're introduced to him. He is a former cavalryman of the Confederate Army, and afterwards he is going to Arizona with a friend of his to search for gold. And when they find gold, his friend was going to say, Hey, John, you stay here. I'm going to try and stake the claim, and we can get our fortune out of this. Unfortunately, things turn sour when Apache um, Warband comes by and starts, you know, he kill John Carter's partner, and now we're chasing him. He's, you know, you know they chase him into a cave. And when the Apaches stop chasing him, he lies down and his body, he finds himself coming out of his body like a spirit. And, you know, he gazes on it, his body's still there, but now he's walking around. He walks out of the cave, gazes up in the sky, finds Mars, and instantly is transported there. And that's where the adventure begins. He starts off... Um, wandering around and having a hard time adjusting because he finds out when he's there because of Mars being a smaller planet having less gravity and has less of an atmosphere he can um, jump further and higher than he would on Earth his muscles you know his his muscles able to adjust uh, to Earth gravity he goes to Mars and he can go much further so he has a big advantage there so he wanders around for a while and he finds out that he's um, he finds this weird structure and he gazes in on it, onto it, and he finds these little um, orb, orbital things that turns out to be eggs, and they start to hatch. And behind him are those who are waiting for those eggs to hatch. They're 10 to, 10 to 15 feet tall, green. They have four arms. They have, you know, tusks coming out of their mouths, big eyes, probably on the, almost on the side of their heads, noses are way up there. But these are the green Martians of a tribe called the Tharks. So... They find him and they take him uh, as a slave at first, and he starts to learn their ways. They're impressed by his ability and all his fighting prowess and all that, so he kind of quickly gains respect, you know, among amongst them fairly quickly. So, and apparently the Tharks are um, the Green Martians um, are a very cold and you know callous race. They don't find much joy in anything except in the torture of others. It's a harsh world, and so they end up being harsh themselves. And they travel around from city to city. These cities are not, you know, cities of their own creation. They're made by someone else. And they're dead cities. They just take shelter there from time to time. The planes that they travel on are the are evaporated oceans from long ago. So, you know, apparently there was more to Mars than just to what the Green Martians show. But he quickly learns their languages. He they he has they show him telepathic abilities, which one of the advantages he has, he can read their minds. But they can't read his. Him, he befriends a few of them. He befriends Tars Tarkas, who is one of the higher up um, warriors of the tribe, um, about basically second in command to the, um, I think Tal Hodges, I think is the leader of the Tharks, who's a cruel um, leader among them. There's Sola. You'll find out her relationship with Tars Tarkas later in the story. I won't we'll get into that. And then he, he meets a friend, a friendly hound. For named Wula, which describes you know, it's called a Kalat, a ten-legged um, monstrous creature, not very um, pretty. They describe it as very ugly. It has a very wide mouth that reminds some of a frog. But once Carter get become finds a way to be friendly with him, he's the most loyal friend in the world. So, so he stays there and learns her ways for a while, and you know, kind of gets a leg up here, here and there. 
one day some ships were flying by over the city that they were staying at and they attack the fleet and take down one vessel and this one vessel has a very important prize and to John Carter's um, surprise this you know this prize is a, a, a woman well it looks like a human anyway a beautiful woman with um, reddish bron red bronze skin and she tries to ask for his help but he doesn't understand, you know, it, um, doesn't understand her at first or what she means by all because he's ignorant of their ways, you know. But eventually, they, um, when he does finally have a chance to meet her uh, and, and talk to her a while, they can't get that stuff straightened out and eventually falls in love with her. And the thing is, after, you know, the, the ruler of the Tharks is, has decided to sacrifice her into the great games. So Carter gets her along with Sola and Wula and tries to get up some thoats, which are these um basically eight legged um steeds that the Tharks use. Two breeds, there's some bigger ones and small ones, so obviously these are the bigger ones. Digressing again. So as short as they find a way to get her to escape the great games and try to take her back to her kingdom of Helium. She you know Dejos Thoris is her name. I forgot to mention that. This um she is a princess of Helium, highly loved and respected by her people. And so while trying to send her back, they're attacked by another group of green Martians called the Warhoons. And they, you know, John Carter says, okay, you guys go ahead. I'll try and hold them off. He eventually gets captured and is taken into the pits where he meets, you know, and while a prisoner there, he meets um, Kento Khan, who is a man, who part of the fleet trying to rescue Dejah Thoris. He befriends him and using, you know, they get thrown into the games of the Warhoons. They find a way to escape. And they'll meet up again, and they, you know, Carter finally finds his way to the um, to the Red Martians, and finds out that Helium is at war with another group called uh, Empire um, called Zadanga, and they're attacking Helium, and they'll stop the war if the Princess Dejah Thoris marries one of the princes of Zadanga. So that's kind of where the main conflict comes in. He's going to try and find John Carter has to find a way to infiltrate um, and get his way to fight off the Zendangas and try to win back the woman he falls in love with, Dejah Thoris. So, how's it end? I won't get into that. But when you look at the next video, I may spoil it a little bit here and there. Um, because the idea of these videos is to encourage you to read these classic ones. And if you don't have time to read, you can easily YouTube the audiobooks and just you know play along and you get just a good experience if you're into audiobooks. So, there you go. Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And, you know, I'll see you in the next video and tell you what the next story is about. Till then.